Hi, hi, welcome to Code Evo. This is day 9 of 100 days of code and the question for today is called total count. Okay, so let me just read the question first and we'll then move on to the approach and try to code. So, given an array ARR of n positive integers and a number k where k is used as a threshold value to divide each element of the array into sum of different numbers. Find the sum of count of numbers in which array elements are divided. Okay, I know it's a mouthful. Let me just deconstruct this and we'll see what exactly are they trying to tell. We are given an array and the size of the array is n. And the array elements are positive integers. Okay, so the array elements can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and can never be minus 1 or minus 2. Okay, so the array elements are positive integers and we are also given a value called k uh, which they are calling as threshold value. So, you are supposed to divide the elements in this array by that value. Okay, so uh, they are trying to uh, represent these elements in the array as sum of the, L sum of the k value. Okay, so uh, let us assume this particular example here we are given an array of size 4 and the array elements are 5 8 10 and 13 so all these are positive integers right so they are also they have also given the value k which is 3 which is the threshold value so what they are trying to tell is that you are going to represent these numbers in the array that is 5 8 10 and 13 in terms of k okay so you are going to represent these numbers in terms of k so let me just give you an example if we have the number 5 you will have to represent 5 in terms of k and the remaining so how exactly will we do that so we have 5 and the value of k is 3 so you can represent 5 as 3 plus 2 okay because 3 is the value of k and you can represent 5 as 3 plus 2. So, here 2 is immaterial because uh, what we actually need is 3 because we are representing 5 in terms of 3, right. So, 2 is just the remaining number. Uh, now, let me just take the next element which is 8, right. So, if you want to represent 8 in terms of k that is 3, you will have to write 3 plus another 3 that will give you 6 and you will have 2 as remaining right so this is how we represent 8 in terms of 3 that is the threshold value so if you could see like you can similarly uh, write for other numbers as well let me just write for 13 uh, 13 along so for 13 we'll have 3 plus 3 that gives us 6 plus another 3 that will give us 9 plus another 3 that will give us 12 right and then we have the remaining 1 so the four threes at the beginning they are there to uh, write in terms of the threshold value and one is just a remaining number right so the output or the answer for this uh, particular array should be uh, the count of all these uh, numbers right so i i haven't written for 10 but yeah so uh, without considering 10 we'll have 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 6 7 8 9 10 right so the answer should be 10 but we haven't written for uh, the value 10 in terms of uh, the threshold value so the answer should be 14 so it's fine so what i'm trying to tell is we are given the integer array positive integer array and you're going to write that in terms of the threshold value and the remaining value and you're just going to count the number of terms that you use to represent these numbers okay so you can try like the, there is a brute force approach to solve this solution which is getting the number and subtracting it by 3 again and again until you can never subtract it again by 3 and uh, counting that. So that is one possible way that you can solve this question. But that is not very efficient because uh, like you are subtracting again and again right it takes more time. But if you know a simple logic that division is actually repeated subtraction right so uh, th there is some uh, kindergarten kindergarten not 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 necessarily kindergarten primary school stuff right so you say multiplication is repetitive addition 
and uh, so subtraction is repeated uh, sorry division is sub, uh, repeated subtraction right so we are just going to use that logic and uh, we, uh, just let me just erase these things and uh, yeah so um, instead of subtracting 5 by 3 again and again you can just divide 5 by 3 and take the modulo of it and both these things combined will give you the expected result right so uh, if you write 5 in terms of the k threshold value it will be 3 plus 2 we have seen that now you can also obtain the same result by uh, like okay we have 3 plus 2 and the answer that will come from uh, 3 plus 2 is 2 right because we have two elements representing the uh, number 5 okay so to get the exact same outcome you can all what you can also do is that you, you have 5 you divide 5 by 3 and get the quotient of it right so if you divide 5 by 3 you will have you will have 1 as quotient okay and we are going to take the remainder as well right so if you divide 5 by 3 you have 1 as quotient and 2 as remainder okay so we have 2 as remainder and 1 as quotient so we are going to add these two I mean not exactly add so what I'm trying to tell is you have one remainder and uh, one as quotient so the answer is 2 okay so I, I think I uh, confused you a little bit there now if you see the example 8 you will understand it better okay so initially you are going to divide 8 by 3 okay if you divide 8 by 3 you will get 2 because 3 times 2 is 6 and you will have a remainder 2 okay that is another number that you are going to use to represent it so like since we have only one remainder you are going to add one for it and it will give you three as the answer and that is how you represent eight right because three plus three plus two you are using three numbers to represent eight and that is the answer that we have obtained by adding the uh, quotient and the uh, value one for the remainder so similarly you can do the same for 13 as well right so 13 divided by 3 sorry 13 divided by 3 gives you 4 right 3 4 uh, 3 times 4 is 12 and you will have 1 as remainder okay so it, it doesn't mean what the remainder is but you are going to consider like uh, remainder is also another number that you are going to use to represent this so you are just going to add 1 so you, you, there is no the I mean only when uh, 0 is the remainder you will have to add nothing for any numbers other than 0 as remainder you will have to add 1 right so it will be 4 plus 1 5 so let me just give you one example where 0 is the remainder and we will see how you work that particular case so let us consider the number uh, 9 okay so if we consider the number 9 if you divide 9 by 3 you will get 3 okay so you can say that you can represent 9 by uh, adding 3 3's okay so 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives you 9 and you have 0 as the remainder so in that case you don't have to add 1 for the remainder and uh, since we have uh, 3 3's to represent the number 9 the answer will just be 3 and you will not add 1 for the reminder so i hope you understood this logic now we'll move on to geeks for geeks and try to solve this it's quite simple so here we are in geeks for geeks and i'm going to give the link to this question in the description so you can go there and try this question out so initially you are just going to traverse through the array because you are going to do this calculation for excuse me so you are going to do this calculation for every every number in this array right so you are going to traverse through the array and I am going to use a for loop for that for int i equals 0 i less than n and i plus plus ok so this for loop is going to traverse through this array and you are going to perform the calculation that we just mentioned inside this loop and before that I am just going to declare a variable called answer and initialize it to 0 now for every element in this array we are just going to divide it by 3 and we are going to 
add it to answer so answer equals answer plus array of i divided by 3 right so when you divide array of i by 3 you will get the quotient so you will add that directly to the answer variable and only if we have a valid reminder which is other than 0 you will add 1 to answer so to check that you are going to uh, get the reminder when you divide array of i by 3 right so we use mod law operator for that so array of i mod 3 if it is not equal to 0 and only when it is not equal to 0 you are going to add 1 to answer because you are also going to use the uh, reminder to represent this number right so you can add 1 to the answer if it is not uh, a valid number so what i'm trying to tell is if the reminder is zero you don't have to add anything to it so we are not going to write that case here and uh, after the end of this loop you can just return answer okay and that is it so we'll try to run this uh, program and see if it works okay sorry my bad i shouldn't have given uh, three as the value because we are just going to use k right so i i was in that uh, mentality like uh, we just solved that example so uh, array of i should be divided by k and array of i mod k shouldn't be equal to 0 okay so it shouldn't be 3 it should be k for that particular example it was 3 so that is that now we'll run this and see if it works uh, so the code works fine and every single test case has been passed so hope you understood this logic if you have any questions put them in the comments and i'll get back to you and if you actually solved it uh, there is a monkey going right over there okay fine so if you solved it uh, post it on linkedin and tag me and uh, hopefully i'll see it so thank you so much for watching see you on tomorrow's episode of 100 days of code bye for now